All right. Oh, I love the title of this next one. So this is going to be Thomas Wells from Navigant. This one's called VVO VAR Optimization or Robot Cartoon Mashup, right? Did I do that right? Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Thomas. All right. We can get going. So as Bill said, uh, my name is Thomas. I work for Navigant. I am an electrical engineer and a data scientist. And I'm going to talk about VVO, which is volt var optimization. Some of you know it as conservation voltage reduction, but I think it's a lot more fun if we think of it in terms of robots. So let's say that we have a secret robot headquarters, and we're interested in energy efficiency. Energy is typically a function of resistance, voltage, and time. And if we reduce any of those three, we get a reduction in energy. Now, being the energy nerds that many of us are, we typically think about energy efficiency or, or energy savings in terms of load reduction, so replacing incandescent bulbs with LEDs, or in reducing the amount of time that we have things on, lighting timers or demand response. But why don't we think about voltage reduction? Well, you might say, voltage Voltage has to be 120 volts at the outlet, and that's only partially true. Voltage can be plus minus 6 volts from 120, according to ANSI standards. And with new technology, utilities can control voltage a lot tighter, and so they can actually operate closer to that bottom end of that range. If we, for example, reduce voltage by roughly 1 or 2 volts, that's not very much. Your lights get a little bit dimmer, nobody notices, and you save roughly 1 or 2% of energy. That sounds pretty great, right? You don't have to do a lot of work, save a little bit of energy. Um, but I've been missing, uh, it, it, that's not that impressive of a stat unless you think about multiplying it across an entire service territory. You get everybody to participate, 100% adoption, nobody knows anything. Resistance is futile. <laughs> All right, so it's a little bit misleading. Uh, not all devices actually save energy at that rate. Reducing the voltage doesn't always equate, uh, equate to a 1% savings. But um, there's enough devices out on the system uh, that do save energy for this to be an attractive investment. In fact, if you, in this particular service territory, if you compare VVO or CVR to traditional energy savings programs like lighting or education, it stacks up pretty well in terms of dollars invested for amount of energy saved. Uh, and uh, I forgot what my next slide is. So now, now we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what's in it for the utility. Savings uh, equates to loss of revenue for a utility. Typically, they have energy efficiency targets that they're required to meet, and they can use VVO programs or CVR programs to hit these targets. As soon as you hear about targets, you should be thinking measurement and verification, which is actually where I come in. I do data science. We get the utilities to cycle their program on and off, green and gray, and we measure using some econometric modeling techniques or uh, time series forecasting the difference between the red and the black line, and that equates to energy savings. All right, so we've talked about voltage, we've talked about optimization, but I've glossed over the VAR part. If electrical engineering jibber-jabber makes your head hurt, uh, you should stop listening for about uh, 30 seconds. We're going to go into VAR control. All right, so you might remember alternating current has both real and reactive power, uh, real being the beer, reactive being the head. But this uh, graphic uh, is pretty misleading, and I really don't like it, so let's go to something uh, a little bit better. So this wagon, moving the wagon forward is what we want. That is the real power. Lifting the handle, while necessary, does not do anything to move the wagon forward. And so that's the reactive part. So power factor correction uh, and VAR optimization is moving the wagon forward, reducing the height of the handle. If we put all of this together, we get the dashed green line. So we flatten the voltage profile. We use capacitors and regulators to flatten the profile. And then we can actually lower voltage for everyone. Confusing? <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully at this point you're thinking, look, I get to save 1% energy. I don't have to know any of this electrical stuff. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to install light bulbs. I don't have to change behavior. This, I just get to sit back and relax. And that's really the point. Most of the time when we think about energy efficiency, we think about, oh, we got to get people to sign up for programs. We got to you know, like, pay for these incentives. VVO, CVR, nobody has to do anything. No work on their part, lots of energy savings. And that's really the point that I want to make tonight. It's not so much about VVR, it's about engineering people out of the equation, right? <laughs> as, as much as we can get people to just lay around and not do anything, it's going to be great, right? And, and, and this isn't a new idea. We've been doing this for a long time. We make safer streets by design, we implement cafe standards, we implement appliance standards, and all of this gets people to save energy, be safer, do better things without them having to think about it. Most of us here are focused on sort of end user, grid in, grid edge side of things. But I think that if we transform our thinking, <laughs> 
we, we might be able to accomplish some pretty big effects without having to get all of our users involved. So, so what I'm asking you tonight is to, you know, we only have one planet, we're all in this together, think about your role, think about what you can do, and think about these system level or global scale things that you can actually implement uh, that take a lot less work and maybe have just as big of an effect. Thanks.